Hi, my name is Galen George, and I'm an application scientist uh, here at Felix Instruments. Um, and why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and tell us about what you do and you know how you got to where you are, um, kind of what your background is in and, and, and what you're currently doing for the company. Okay, well, my name is Andrea Rivera. I'm working at Gamma, that is a applied research company. I have been here for almost six years, I think. Well, I'm an agricultural engineer. That's the name of, of what I do too, because there is no specific uh, uh, label to what I do. We cover uh, a lot of activities here, we, especially with avocados and citrus, mandarins, oranges, lemons, and of course, avocados. And um, well, I have been here for six years. Before that, uh, I did my master's in Australia. Before that, I did uh, applied research, but in sweet cherries. So my, my background is mainly in applied research. And um, well, after my master's in Australia, I came here. As I told you before, I have been here like for almost six years. And um, what we do in general is we try to get results to in, in different areas, for example, increase yield, um, number of fruits, uh, try different products from chemicals, components, industries. We do our own research too. My bosses are uh, consultants, important consultants here in Chile in, in avocados and citrus, so they go every day to the orchards, they talk with the producers, and they talk about problems that could arise on those orchards. And that is when we come in and we try to solve those problems in irrigation, fertilization, cultural practices, for example, harvest. At harvest, uh, we do post-harvest too. And of course, we measure dry matter we analyze the quality of the fruit to impose harvest and quality measurements and for citrus too. I, more or less, that's it. So uh, is it safe to say, so you're researching all of these uh, different factors that could influence mm -hmm. the potential yield and quality of, of the avocados, right? And mm -hmm. are we talking mostly about Haas avocados? Yeah. Or is there any green skin, mostly no, Haas? No, yeah. it's only Haas avocado. Mm -hmm. Avocado is like 99.9 .9 production here in Chile. We have, of course, some green avocados, but that's mostly you can find them in houses. Like, okay, in my in my backyard, I have a, like a fuerte variety or something like that. But they they all well, you can find maybe sometimes in the supermarkets some fuerte or stair or some other varieties that are green skin, but the production is mostly, almost totally has. Mm -hmm. So previously with your work, uh, uh, can you kind of walk us through how you would go about uh, taking your dry matter measurements, how you would go about sampling in the in the fields and, and kind of the limitations to, to that approach that you were using? Yes, well, um, for most of our uh, essays in avocados, we measure dry matter. We don't have an, uh, a research specifically uh, for measuring dry avocado, but because you don't need only to increase the productivity of your orchard, but it all you know, you also need to have a good quality of the fruit. So that's why in almost every essay we measure dry matter, but we don't measure at the orchard itself because. Here in Chile, most of the orchards of has avocados are in high slopes. So it's quite difficult. It's, yeah, you can walk there with more or less difficulties, but you cannot go with an equipment because what if you fall? What if your equipment falls to the ground? So no. For each treatment that we have in whatever we say that we are measuring, we take a sample of 30 fruits per treatment. And we measure uh, four points in each fruit. So in total, we have 120 measurements per treatment. 
and we do that because we are doing research. So we have we want to have the the best assessment of the treatment. And talking with you, you told us that, for example, if it's a commercial, you measure one point per fruit. But if you are doing research, it will be better to have four measurements per fruit. So that's what we do. And before using your instrument, we were using the microwave. And we already measure uh, 30 fruits and weigh that much per treatment. Consider that per treatment, you we have like 20 to 25 trees, more or less. So we take a sample of 30 fruits. That could be a great number, but the variability of dry matter in a tree itself is very, very great. So you can have in a in just one tree, fruits that range, for example, from 20 to 30 of value of dry matter, or will be more. Maybe you can find sometimes a 17 and a 32. So the, the range is, is quite large. So that's why we take 30 um, fruits per treatment. Of course, it's a time saver because using the microwave, we could measure like I don't know, eight samples, eight treatments, but we need two persons to do the microwave analysis. So using your model, we only need uh, one person. And we could, we can do eight, or nine, dep it depends. Uh, no, no, I think that eight or nine per day, one person using your instrument uh, versus the microwave where you need, yeah, maybe you can do the same amount, but you need two persons. Mm -hmm. So it's double. Right. That's great. Um, mm -hmm. And I do think it's actually really valuable that you are taking those four points. Uh, as as you know, the dry matter is not a very homogeneously distributed attribute yeah. throughout the entire avocado. So yeah. when you're taking a scan of one single point, you're actually only getting the dry matter of that area of the avocado, yeah. not necessarily what the whole thing is representative as if you are taking you know taking multiple scans is kind of analogous to uh destructively sampling you know more of the fruit, of the actual flesh of the fruit and then microwaving all of that as one yeah. uh is there any really interesting research that you guys have uh kind of helped out with lately that you want to talk about as far as treatments or anything like that that you've seen that is uh helping out a lot with the yield or any kind of pr problems with uh quality um, maybe we, I can talk to you about uh, it says related to fertilization. We are doing a nitrogen. We use urea. Um, so the amount of nitrogen that you apply to trees is already well known. Is I think this is like per season is like six hundred kilos of urea per hectare. And you apply that in three times here in Chile, in October, January, and March, April, like in the um, root flash. And it's, that's what commonly we do here in, in this area. But we are trying to assess if we can change the timing of the application of urea. The same amount for every treatment, but apply it at different months. Uh, we are trying different months. Also, for example, applying urea or nitrogen all year, all around year. And, and we are looking at what is happening. We don't have any results or conclusive results right now because this is has two years. So there are some tendencies, but we cannot say for sure one which treatment is better. We usually conduct a tria trials for four years to reach a conclusive uh, assessment. But in related to, to dry matter, we measure not only at harvest dry matter, we do a measurements like starting in July until harvest every month for every treatment. We are currently have like 11 treatments so, okay, we, of course, always look for the yield, which treatment is better, but we are also looking at 
okay, I'm applying the same amount of nitrogen, but at different times. What will happen with the maturity or the ripening of the fruit? So that's why we are looking at what is happening every month, not only at harvest, to know if, for example, uh, if will you will have reached maturity sooner or later, depending on the treatment. As I told you, we don't have any res conclusive results right now, mm -hmm. but we're looking at what will happen if you apply nitrogen in at different months. Mm -hmm. And what will happen not only with yield, but also with what dry matter and also, of course, the quality of the fruit to apple harvest. Well, I'm really excited to see what kind of results you get out of that. Mm -hmm. uh, what what was there research that you that you or another group conducted that determined this how you guys are currently performing your fertilization at these specific months? Was there any was there research that indicated that these are the best times to do it, or was that just kind of in no, place? No. Oh well, I cannot recall right now which uh, essay it was. I I guess it was like years, years ago, maybe in the, in the 90s or 80s, maybe research done in other countries, but we are looking at the physiology of the tree. So when do you need your nitrogen? At what moments do you need it? Why in October? Why in January? Why in March, April? You have in October flowering and fruit set here in Chile. And also the roots are very active. or So that's a very good moment to apply nitrogen that will supply for the fruits. You also have a shoots growing. So it's a very high competition and you need a very high amount of nitrogen. It will also depend if you have a high load or low load of fruit at the, in the tree or in the sector that you're analyzing. So that's, a, that's why, for example, in October, you need to apply, October, November, you need to apply nitrogen. Why in January? Because you also have the branches that grew from October to January. You, also, you already have fruit set, but you need to, to get more, more food for the tree so it can keep growing. And you also have root activity in that moment. And in March, you have another peak for road activity lower than in October, but you are entering autumn at that time too. So you will have uh, more resources, more nitrogen for in the roots for spring. So you are supplying your the amount of nitrogen nitrogen that you need for spring, uh, buds, flowering, and everything. So that's why we apply on those moments. And why we why we're trying to change those timing is because you have also uh, what is happening at the bats, the differentiation, or for example, here in Chile, we have a flowering that extends for two months. Can be mid-September until mid-November. So we are applying at what moment? Maybe it could be better to apply at the beginning of the flowering. Maybe it could be better to apply later at November. It's better to apply, for example, instead of in January on December. So you are looking at a differentiation of the bats, more or less. So we're, we're, we're trying to discover what will happen if we change, looking at the physiology of the tree. We, we don't do like a microscopical analysis of bats. We do applied research. So we look at the final deal per, per year. So, but you can try to explain what happens at, at every month, looking at the physiology of the, of the tree, here, at least here in Chile. Of course, will be different in the US or in another country, but well, the variation will be in the months, but what happens in the tree is the same for, for every place. Well, that's, I mean, it's really great to see the continuation of research. You know, we, a lot of times I th feel like a study is published and we kind of take it as definitive fact and we never no. expand and we never expand upon that. So it's great to see that you guys are doing some work to, to kind of investigate why and, and maybe see improvements with, with changing these intervals of fertilization. 
Um, yeah. And that's great that we uh, can incorporate the 751 to help you with the dry matter measurements, yeah. um, not just, you know, after harvest, but to, yeah. to, to kind of track maturity stages. So um, yeah. that's great. Uh, I It's been 15 minutes here. And I would like to say mm -hmm. thank you so much uh, yeah. for this interview. And it was really great to learn from you about what you guys are doing down in Chile. And right. if you have anything else you want to talk about research or other projects that um, or if you have links to, uh, you know, your uh, web company's website, or if you have links to research that you want people to know about, um, feel free to send those to us, and we'll we'll get them out to everyone. Okay. Thank you very much to you too, and for yeah. the conversation and everything. Thank <laughs> you so much, Andrea. Have a great day. Yeah. You too. Bye bye.